In this screencast, I'm going to do an overview of how a motor neuron stimulates a muscle fiber to contract. And I will also do a brief overview of the process of muscle contraction. Remember that in order for a skeletal muscle fiber to contract, it must get a signal from the nervous system. And the part of the nervous system it gets a signal from is called a motor neuron. What will happen is, an electrical signal called an action potential will travel down the motor neuron. So that travels down the motor neuron. It's an electrical signal called an action potential. At the end of the motor neuron is these structures called synaptic vesicles. And they contain different neurotransmitters. In the case of a motor neuron that stimulates a skeletal muscle fiber, that neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine. So when the action potential gets down to the end, it will cause these synaptic vesicles to release acetylcholine. The acetylcholine will then cross the synapse, it will then cross the synapse, this physical gap between the motor neuron and the muscle fiber, and bind to acetylcholine receptors. So the signal down the motor neuron is electrical, but the signal across the synapse is chemical. If enough of these acetylcholine neurotransmitters bind to receptors, it will then induce an action potential in the muscle fiber. And that will induce the muscle fiber to release calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now before I go over the muscle contraction, let's come back up here to the synapse. Once this acetylcholine binds, it can't just stay there. If it did, it would keep the muscle in a constant contraction. So within the synapse, there is an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. Remember, you can recognize an enzyme because it ends in ASE. What the acetylcholine esterase will do is it will break down the acetylcholine molecule. So the acetylcholine will go across the synapse. If enough of them bind, it induces an action potential and muscle contraction in the fiber. The acetylcholine esterase comes in and breaks the acetylcholine down, and the stimulation will stop. Now, in reality, what happens is, and it happens much faster than I can show you, acetylcholine will be released, bind, cause an action potential, be broken down, more acetylcholine will be released, bind, broken down, and this happens within milliseconds that it repeats itself. Now, let's talk about what happens once the calcium is released. And again, this is a review. This is a review of muscle contraction. The calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it binds to the active site on actin. When it binds to the active site on actin, it opens the active site, which allows the myosin cross bridge to bind to that active site. And then you should remember we need to break down the molecule ATP. And by breaking down that molecule of ATP, that allows that myosin cross bridge to ratchet. Then it's going to use another ATP and the myosin's going to let go. As long as the acetylcholine is stimulating the muscle fiber, that active site will stay open. The myosin cross bridge will let go, grab onto another one, ratchet, let go, and so on. Remember the tug of war example we use. You arms grab and ratchet. Another one grabs and ratchets while the other one lets go, and so on. As the myosin cross bridges grab and ratchet, it pulls the Z lines of the sarcomere closer to each other, and that is muscle contraction. Now once this signal stops. No more acetylcholine binds on these receptors. That will cause the calcium to be actively transported back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Without the calcium, the active site is closed and myosin can no longer bind and the sarcomere goes back to its resting length. Again, review this process. You have this slide in your PowerPoints, and if you have any questions, let me know.